a very easy way to do this will be to use link and that's what we're going to do right now so let's go ahead and get rid of this right here okay and we can actually get rid of this as well so let's just say that var result is going to be equal to from some query in the x document the descendants descendants of cd okay so from descendants of cd let's let's select a new object in here and this is just going to be anonymous type so we're not going to you know if i had a cd class over here at the bottom if i had something like a, a class cd actually let me do this so then we can uh, actually see how this works static class cd why, why, why is it giving me these stupid rules ah okay because i'm in debug mode so it doesn't like this very much but okay let's just do this real quick public static class cd and then i'll have to stop later to make it work let's just put some properties here just a few of them string title and then um, another property string artist okay both of these properties are pretty good um, we're not going to use immediately but just keep that in mind so now we're going to create an, an anonymous type here on the fly okay there's nothing to do with this okay so forget about this for a second okay i'm even going to comment this out so just forget about that for a second pretend i didn't do that and complicate it in your life and so now we can we can create this anonymous object on the fly from the XML file. So let's say title is going to be equal to q dot um, element and element title. And let's look at the value of the element title. And then let's get the artist q dot element artist that value let's get one more what else do we have in there i'm going to pop open the the xml file here and so we already have title we already have artist let's get let's get the year and the price and that's it so let's get the year it's going to be equal to q element here, the value, and then the price. Let's see what we get. Console dot read key. I might have to. Yeah, I might have to stop because I'm I'm doing all this while, and then of course I press F10 again and then stop the recording. Okay, so let's say F11, and yeah, it's not gonna let me. So let me press, let me restart here, and now we're back. He ran the query. It exists. It's lazy loading. And so if I look in here, if I expand this and I look at it, now I can see that I have all this different. Um, anonymous types with different properties this prop this this first one is uh, the artist Bob Dylan price and we have a title and it was 1985 and so let's go ahead and iterate through over this let's see so we can say for each result we have a CD right and so let's just output this thing so let's just say um, artist a little space in there title I'm gonna say year and then we're gonna say price and then in here we put a comment and we dump those objects cd dot title and then 
actually cd the artist cd the title cd the year and then cd the price all right so let's go back in here f11 okay so now we're going to iterate through the whole thing and as we are iterating through the whole thing, let me go ahead and bring this up a little bit so you can see it. As it's iterating through the whole thing, then it's putting the data in our console application here. And now we're no longer working with strings of data. Now we're working, we're working with a solid and concrete object, this CD object that we made. Well, we didn't, it's, we, I'm calling it CD, it's actually a anonymous type because it doesn't have a type in here but um, you get the idea um, another thing that can happen to so let me go ahead and click continue here so now we have we have all the data uh, from the XML in our uh, console app in here so another thing that we can do is what I was going for earlier um, I'm gonna go ahead and uncomment this and instead of creating a new anonymous type, I'm actually going to use that CD type that uh, I created at the bottom. And the CD type doesn't have a year in the price, but here's the thing. When you use this, you actually get IntelliSense, which is kind of nice. So let's say I don't have the title. I just press space, and now there it is. The, the title shows up. Um, the reason why artist didn't show up is because it was already taken, but if you're building this from scratch, then it gives you, oh, you want the title or do you want the artist? So let's say, you know, title here, and then I want the artist here. Tab, tab will help. And now, New CD. Let me not make this into a static. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, it can't be a static because I'm creating multiple instances of it. And this is going to work pretty much the same, but I just have to remove the year and the price in here because I didn't put that in the in the CD. Uh, but I could I could have been not so lazy and done that. But okay, just just examples, right? So now when we're done, we don't have we don't have a I enumerable of uh, anonymous. Okay, of course I pressed the F10 again. <laughs> Funny, I just I, it's I always do. Okay, so uh, as I was saying, the difference between this example and the one prior is that prior we had a um, I enumerable collection of a anonymous type with those four the four those four properties. Now we have we're going to have an I, I enumerable collection of CDs. So pressing F10 here, um, if we look at the results right now, let me just click in here and then look at the results. You can see that um, in the position zero here, I have an XML underscore tutorial, which is the namespace for this application, dot CD. And if you expand that, then you have the properties of the CD. Okay. Uh, previously, it was an anonymous type. Well, I hope this helps. Um, as you can see, let me just go ahead and let it iterate over here. And it just dumps all the data in the console app again. Um, so this is how to read data out of an XML using the X document and link. It's just really straightforward. It's really easy. Oh, you know, I should mention something. I should mention something that I think is really important too. As you can see, I'm loading data from an XML file, you know, uh, file on disk. Sometimes you have to load data from a web service or something like that, and it would be a, a really big waste of time to get that block of data, persist it to the disk, so only then you can read it. That makes no sense, pretty much. Um, so what we should do here is use. If there's a different method. Okay. So instead of using this, instead of using the load, um, go ahead and stop this. Instead of using the load, you use the parse. So there is this uh, method called the parse, and what it does, it takes data out of out of um, uh, a string. Uh, 
variable. Okay, so let me copy. Let me copy just a little bit of data here. So let me get this. Control C and parse and see get get XML data. I'm just creating a method here on the fly. Control dot gives me that little IntelliSense thing. I click on it and then just created the method from down here. And then in here, I'm going to return some uh, XML information. So let me do this. It's a bit of a problem. So backslash, backslash, backslash. So it's not confused and I'm not trying to close it. And now plus, I'm going to remove this comment. We don't need it. So I'm just adjusting here. Just bear with me for a second. And we also have to, because this document right now is incomplete, it's missing the closing tag for the catalog. So I've got to add that. So let me add this at the very end. Catalog, it was at the bottom of the document, but I didn't get to copy that part. And uh, what else? Okay, let's add this, guys. I think we're good. So now we would be returning this data right here. Actually, let me just, just so it's a bit more clear, let me just say this var right here. Um, XML in memory. To get XML data. And then in here we have this XML in memory variable. Okay, let me run this one more time. And we're about to wrap up here. F11, not 10. And now we can step through it. And it's going to get the XML data for me. So imagine this is coming from a web service, not from here, but just you made a call to web service, it just dumped back to you a bunch of XML, and now you have this XML in here. This is just, this is not an XML file, this is just a string. This is just, you know, it could be hello world, doesn't matter. And now we're going to try to load that information into an X doc, and there it is. Now it became an XML uh, file that uh, it, can, it can be manipulated. And uh, now everything goes pretty much the same as we did earlier. Let me just uh, move this up a little bit here. And I'm going to press F5 to just let it run. And of course, it ran, but then what happened? You couldn't see anything, could you? All right, so F11, and now it's dumping the data again. Oh, I only have I only have one in this in this file, of course. Uh, this only has one record, so there it is. One record. Press a key, and application closes. Supposedly, okay, very good. Uh, always struggles a little bit, huh? It's kind of hard to keep track with where things are. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the demo. Um, this is how to read the XML file. Watch the next video. I'm going to show you how to commit data back to it, how to create a new CD and persist it to the XML file. Maybe you have to ship it somewhere um, and whatnot. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Please like the video. Talk to you soon. I'll see you soon. You will see me soon.